Russia. <laughs> okay, so question number one. In the last year, you released your first solo album, We Wait So Long To Begin. How long did it take to make it? How many tracks were not included in this album? We Wait So Long To Begin um, took, um, I don't know, a little while to write. Probably worked on it off and on for about a year. Um, once I decided to come back and start recording. Um, first song we did separately was Classic. And then um, the rest of the album just started to come together a little bit at a time. And the last song that ended up on the album was Small Town. Um, ten tracks that were done. Um, there were not any com uh, completed tracks that didn't make the album. I had um, demos for a couple of tracks um, that just never came to fruition. Uh, a, a very old song called Loved You For So Long. And then um, a demo version of a song called If that I think I wrote when I was 16 that, that may come back. I've thought about redoing that one. Okay, so question number two, what prompted your return to music? What prompted my return to music? It's the beautiful woman uh, right here that you can't see on camera asking the questions. Uh, my wife, there she is, uh, my wife Tiffany. Um, um, and I, I had some friends along the way, um, some really close friends, uh, Aaron and Roche and Brandy, um, who used to be Element 80's original manager. We, um, they were always encouraging over the years after I stopped doing music with Element 80 and then um, when I met Tiffany she really pushed me to get back into it um, and I was just eager for her you know I, I really really loved her a lot and I wanted her to be able to um, hopefully see some of those things that she never got to see and it pushed me to kind of bring back um, just bring music back into my life so it's been a, it's been a gift and um, so she's the one that ultimately brought me back yeah, I know. Next, <laughs> next question. <laughs> question number three. Who designs the album covers for you? Well, that's a great question, uh, Russian community. The <laughs> album covers are all done by Miss, Mrs. Tiffany Galloway. She does every um, album cover. Um, she did We Wait So Long To Begin. She did Retrovision. And she did all the singles, uh, Awake, In My Life, um, War, um, and then a new a new single coming soon called Hollow. Um, so anything that we've done, she's done every bit of artwork. It's all her. Yay. I know. I love to do that too. Give her up, Russia. <laughs> She'll do yours too. Um, question number four. What do you do now? Um, are you spending time with your family? And what kind of job do you have? Um, okay, so right now, um, as you can see behind me, we have a... Uh, we're very fortunate to have a studio here in our home that we've been um, work, we've been building over the past few years. Um, so every day, typically, um, unless I just need a mental break, um, I'll work on songs. Um, I'm working on tons of new uh, songs right now that will be out shortly. Um, I do have a job. Uh, I, actually, Tiff and I work for the same company. We work during the day and we work from home. Um, so that's nice to have steady income, but you know we both have passions outside of that that um, that we do. So um, you know, hopefully, music can be full time again. But um, as you guys know, it takes some time to build, and um, you have to humble yourself and and work and do what you have to do to take care of your family. Um, and so we're we're very fortunate. And so yes, I work during the day, and then I do music every other second. All right. So what are your plans for the future? Uh, to what extent are you going to play music in the future? So, um, obviously in the future, music just becomes more and more um, back in my life every day. Um, I have a lot of projects that I'm working on. Hopefully um, a new band um, starting up very soon um, with some guys that you might know. Um, so I think everybody will be very happy about that. So I've been writing material for that, um, collaborating with some other people, and then working... Um, on tracks for my daughter Madeline, um, who uh, Madeline Galloway, who has a couple of tracks out already, she's doing very well. Um, so, working on tracks for her, she's got she's got a little bit more of a pop indie, Billie Eilish type of vibe to her. So, um, that's what we've been working on. Okay. Question number six. It's it's a two parter. So oh. take out your notebook. <laughs> okay. So, um, how did you become interested in music? 
Mm -hmm. It always happens that um, you end up being shocked by a certain song or a certain moment. Mm -hmm. um, people become dedicated to music at that point. So um, with that, which bands or artists influenced you the most at the beginning of your career? Easy questions. Great questions, though. Um, I've loved music since I was um, able to talk. I've always been singing. I've always been into music. Um, ever since I was a little kid, uh, I have three younger sisters. Um, my parents are still married, so there were six of us in the family. We used to ride around in this. We had a station wagon and we had vans, so uh, we would ride around in there and we would sing Elton John songs really loud. Um, so we all were always doing that and singing. And then the actual defining moment, I can remember it very well when I was 14, and my buddy. Um, my buddy had me uh, hang out at his house, and I was spending the night over there, and then he played the Smashing Pumpkins Siamese Dream album, and I almost lost my mind um, when I heard Chair of Rock. And then once I heard that, it was over. I wanted to learn every Smashing Pumpkins song, um, still one of my favorite bands today, um, and I immediately picked up a guitar and started writing um, from that moment. That was a defining moment for me. Okay, so uh, number seven, which music do you prefer to listen to now? Which music do you prefer to listen to now? If you looked at my uh, music library, it would be, uh, it's, it's all over the place. Um, some of my favorite bands would probably surprise, or, or musicians would probably surprise some people. Um, I'm a pr um, huge, huge, huge Bring Me The Horizon fan. Um, Love Bring Me the Horizon, big fan of their guitar player, Lee. Um, I use a lot of his sounds, if I can, <laughs> um, to on newer stuff that I'm working on. Um, huge Seven Dust fan uh, growing up um, for a long time, obviously Smashing Pumpkins. Um, a really big 21 Pilots fan. Um, Tiff and I have gone to see them many times live. Um, and I'm actually a fan of stuff that people you would be probably surprised about. Um, I'm, I enjoy Billie Eilish. I love Lana Del Rey. Um, a lot of things that have a different type of vibe. Halsey. Um, I like stuff that sounds a little darker. Um, so that's where I typically go. But then on the heavy side, you know, obviously I'm going to listen to um, I'm an old school hate breed fan, uh, Kill Switch Engage, and Lamb of God. Uh, number eight, when did you start to write lyrics, and what was the very mm. first song about? Um, I started really writing lyrics heavily around 15 or 16 when I was um, getting pretty decent at the guitar. Um, first song, I can't remember if the first song I wrote was Price to Pay or if. Price to Pay actually got reincarnated with Element 80. We, we released it on the Bear album. Um, that one is just about... Um, you know, I was young when I wrote it. It's about a, it's about a young relationship not working out and having wasted all that time. Um, and if, which was not released, um, it has never been. It's never been released. Um, but I've talked to Tiff about re-recording it and releasing it. So maybe I need to do that in the future. Um, that is about um, somebody that uh, wants to get out of where they are, but it feels trapped. So we do need to do that one. Yeah, no, it's a good song. It's a good song. You know what? I'll just for you, Russia. <laughs> I'm gonna do the song. I'll I'll, I'll I'll start on it right now. Yes, everybody well, needs to push him to do the song. Yeah, it's just called if, so I will do it. All right, everybody, blow him up with that <laughs> one. Okay. Um, question number nine: Do you read books? Mm. If so, which books affected you most of all? Um, I read a lot when I was younger. Um, I think I'm guilty, like probably a lot of people now. I don't read nearly as much as I used to. Um, I'm a little bit older than, you know, than the, the gen new generation now. We just read tablets and phones. But when I was, uh, especially in middle school, um, I read all the time. Probably my favorite book that I read was when we were um, in L.A. recording the Element 80 album. Uh, Ryan Carroll, our drummer, um, had suggested that I read The Dirt. It's the Motley Crue book, and it is fantastic. So if you get a chance, I know there's a Netflix movie on it, but read the book. It's, it's fantastic. Books are better than the TV shows. The, the book was unbelievable, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you think about the state of rock music today? Um, the state of rock music is pretty sad. Um, here in, in the States, at least, um, 
I don't think it gets as much respect or attention as it does, say, overseas, um, probably where you guys are at. Um, over here, we are overrun right now by um, pop music and, I, I mean, a lot of really terrible hip-hop. Uh, there's some really good hip-hop, but there's a lot of trash, and it's it's flooding, in my opinion. Um, you know, the difference is now everybody can be a producer. It's very simple to create music in your house if you have a, uh, a, a setup and a little bit of knowledge and some drive. Um, so as a result, you got you kind of get flooded. Um, streaming platforms, you have tons of options of things that you could listen to. Uh, and all, all, there's almost so much that you don't know where to find it or don't know that it's even available. So um, sadly, I think the state of, you know, rock me, I think there is a chance for it to come back a little stronger, but um, I think that there need to be more um, there needs to be more bands that are better at songwriting. I think there's not enough differentiation between the songwriting, too many bands that sound the same, um, and I think that there are not enough bands that are willing to take risks. And I remember some of the things that attracted me to some of the bands, like um, when I heard Korn when I was like 14, it was um, life-changing because they, they sounded insane to me. I mean, System of a Down sounded insane when it came out. So those are bands that kind of took risks, Slipknot, you know, they took risks. So um, I think that nobody's really come out and really done anything that's been shockingly new or um, just a, a cut above. There's a ton of bands that are good players, good musicians, but their songs are not memorable. So here, at least in the States, I think we need, I need, think we need people to, to be better songwriters and they need to take more risks. Okay. Um, I like this next question a okay. lot because it's, got a compliment tagged into it too. Whoever so, wrote the next question, you won. I like this one a lot. I said, how did, you, how did you come up with your style and make it so perfect? Oh, that's, fan, that's a fantastic question. Uh, thank you for that um, question with a compliment, whoever that was. Um, how did I come up with my style and make it so perfect? So, um, it depends on what genre you're referring to. If, if, you're, if you're going back to the Element 80 days, um, the reason Element 80 worked really well uh, I grew up with a very, um, listened to a lot of what was on the radio. So there was a lot of pop music, a lot of um, R&B music and things like that. But, you know, my dad was a rocker too, so I heard a lot of Kiss, a lot of Van Halen, a lot of Who, um, so stuff like that. So I think, and when I met uh, Matt, you know, for Element 80 Guitar Player, he is an old school heavy metal guy. A lot of Ozzy Osbourne, Zach Wilde you know, Randy Rhodes type uh, stuff like that. So the heavier, the better, the louder the guitars, the better. I think, so I think one of the things we did was we kind of balanced each other out. I brought him back a little bit, he brought me up a little bit, and um, we kind of came up with a pretty unique sound. And that's why a lot of the times you'll hear on Element 80 songs, um, specifically, you'll hear Matt and I doing the same thing. He'll be playing it on guitar and I'll be singing it. And those were just kind of the things we would do is we would kind of split off and then find a point in the song to kind of hit together. And um, so I think that was impactful. Um, as far as anything else, you know, when I'm trying to do solo stuff, for me, the genre of music is not important. It's about how it makes you feel. Um, that's why I think I like so many different genres. I mean, if it's a good song, it's a good song. And the point is to feel something from it. So um, for me, what I try to do is critique myself when I'm in here doing a song and if I'm doing it by myself um, I try to I, I ask I ask other people I send it to other people and say what do you think about this what do you think about this do you like it would you change it did it make you feel anything if somebody comes back and says I got chills then I'm on the right track um, I, you know Tiff's very honest with me she'll say nah I really wasn't feeling it um, you know I've had other people same thing so um, that's the key do you feel it? And also, if you're working in a setting with somebody else, um, like We Wait So Long to Begin was produced by Jason Shower. Um, he's a really good dude. And he was very critical of me when I'm singing. He, he didn't treat me special or treat me like I was, you know, better than anybody or, or that I had any kind of history or background or anything. Um, he pushed me really hard. And I think one of the things you have to do is you have to be willing to take criticism take criticism, excuse me, and you have to be willing to um, try other ideas that you normally wouldn't try. We did that in Element 80 all the time. If, if Element 80 had ended up being the way that I wanted every song to go, it would have ended up a lot different. 
You know, I initially thought Dummy Block was a stupid song, and it turned out great. <laughs> so, whatever. What do I know? <laughs> okay, so this next one's kind of interesting. Okay. Um, why do you think Element 80 did not receive more popularity mm. in a career progression after the promising start with the song being in the Need for Speed soundtrack? Yeah. Um, what do you think the reason is for that? Element 80, man, is a... Is a um, Element 80 is an interesting story. You know, we, we started off in a very small town. We rose up very quickly with the help of some really good people, really good fans, and really, really fantastic people in, in radio here. Uh, and obviously, we were the product of a different time. Social media was not really a thing yet. Um, MySpace was out there, but I mean, that lets you know it kind of dates us a little bit. We didn't have the ability to just post on Facebook and then just add your songs and stream on Spotify or you know, Apple Music, it didn't work that way. We were at this weird time where the genre of music that we were doing was getting oversaturated, right? So you had bands that were doing really well still, you had Linkin Parks and Mudvayne and like all these great bands, but it was also getting very, very saturated with lots of bands that either had minimal regional success or bands that you maybe never even heard of, but they were signed to record labels. I can't tell you how many we toured with that were on a major label that you probably never heard of, you know, and the, and 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 for some regions ourselves included. Um, I think the biggest things for Element 80 were we were a little bit too late. I think we were a couple of years too late. Um, by that time, I think the genre was changing, and our style of music had been saturated so much that people were wanting something different. You started seeing bands come out that were more like uh, the darkness was huge at that time. They were blowing up. And you were seeing different types of music get away from, uh, we were thrown into the new metal category. So it started to become a dirty word um, for, a, for a while. And then, um, honestly, we were also at a weird time where album sales were still relevant, but they weren't tracking online sales. So you're at this weird thing where they're trying to shift from physical CD sales and then digital sales. So we, we were just, I think, honestly, I think the timing was bad. Um, we did not get good representation. Um, Universal Records, you know, I think they did what they could um, overall, but a lot of things didn't come to fruition. We didn't get to do the, we didn't get to shoot the video. There were a lot of promotional things that didn't happen. Um, a lot of touring things that didn't happen. And so ultimately we just had to, Element 80 kind of hit a peak and then as soon as we peaked, it hit a valley and you know, we had to make some uh, decisions. So we put out the bear independently. Um, we asked to be let go from Universal. And then we did the bear independently. Um, uh, Cameron uh, Rune had left at that point. We brought in Zach Bates, um, changed the sound a little bit, changed the style, got a little more progressive and we were at our peak as far as musicianship. But then um, after that, we just lost momentum and I think everybody needed a breather. So it's it's kind of a tragic, sad story, honestly. But I, now that I'm older and I look back on it, I'm really pleased with what we did, and um, you know, I'm hoping to maybe catch lightning in a bottle twice. Okay, so question number thirteen: Do you keep in touch with the members of Element Eighty, in mm. particular, uh, the band's guitarist Matt Woods? Uh, <laughs> um, no, uh, no. I keep in touch with uh, Ryan, Ryan, a uh, great guy, drummer, and um, I keep in touch with uh, Zach occasionally. He's a good dude, bass player. We have all, um, I live close to Ryan, so he's close to me. Zach lives a ways away. Uh, Cameron, I've spoken to him a few times. He also lives uh, very far away. Um, and then I don't speak to Matt, no. We've uh, gone our separate ways. Um, he has a new band, I believe, with, um, you know, and he's doing well, and I've got my thing, so uh, I think that was just a, I think we were just, you know, in that band for a reason, for a moment of time, and now we've gone back to our separate ways. Okay. Um, there is very little information in, on the internet about the band. Mm -hmm. It is known that after release of the band, the band broke up for a while, um, but later the band recovered, played gigs, and mm -hmm. commenced recording a new album. Is that true? Uh, do you have songs from that time which haven't weren't released or that nobody's heard um so yeah so the band you know we we 
we called it quits, and then um, I know the guys waited, I don't know, six or seven months, and they said, hey, we really want to come back and do some more shows. I was kind of reluctant, um, but I came back, and we did it, and we, I, I don't know, we built momentum for about another year or so, um, kind of trying to start over. We did work on some new songs, um, not to the degree that we did when we were really pushing Element 80, like, it just wasn't to the same level. Um, I think everybody was kind of, um, by that point, uh, Matt and Ryan were playing in different bands. Zach was in a different band. I had, you know, like we, I was just um, not wanting to do music at all. I was pretty depressed from the Element 80 stuff. Um, and so we worked on some songs, um, but none of them ever came to fruition. And um, it's sad. We had a couple that I think were really good. Um, but um, but no, nothing ever recorded. We we were we did have studio time booked, um, but uh, that's kind of a that's kind of a long story. We just never got in the studio, and uh, bef before we even thought about going back in, the band had split. So okay, so I think this is the last hard question <laughs> oh, until we move on to some more fun things. So okay. the the next question is, why did Element Eighty disband? Mm -hmm. um, do you regret it? Um, and if you had an opportunity to put former members of the band together, would you do it? Um, Element 80 disbanding was very sad. Uh, when it happened, it was, I think all of us were so beat up that we were just like, we needed to get away from each other. Um, we had, and it wasn't because of necessarily the guys, it was because of the things that we, we had all poured a tremendous amount of our lives into the band at that point. Um, and we were just exhausted. Um, the same cliche that you hear. We were just exhausted and uh, felt like we had, had had ended in a valley, and we were just done. So um, it, it's sad. I, I do. I you know, looking back at it now, I'm happy about what we did. Um, uh, as far as um, you say, doing a new band with it, former or members. If you had the opportunity to put former members in a band together, would you do it? Um, yeah, I mean, I've played with Ryan. Um, and I I'm hope to be playing with him more in the future. Um, I would obviously play with Zach. Um, Zach's a killer dude. He just he just moved away. Um, but I but you know he's a great guy and a killer bass player. So I would love one day to reunite with Zach. Uh, Matt probably not. Um, we just we have you know he has his he has his new thing going and I and I have my own thing going. So I think that I think that we were meant to be together in LMA80, and I think that's the extent of our of our relationship. And Ryan Carroll is an unbelievable guitar player. <laughs> yes, Ryan Carroll. So just to exaggerate a little bit, Ryan Carroll, who um, I still see on a pretty decent regular basis, um, and has played with me. He's played on um, shows that we've done for the We Wait So Long to Begin album. Um, unbelievable drummer, unbelievable person, um, and is actually probably the best all-around musician that I've ever been around in my life. He's an unbelievable guitar player. He's a really good singer um, and just a good dude. So, yeah, he's, uh, the uh, as far as overall talent for the band, you know, people may say, oh, you know, I really like the way Dave could scream or sing. Or I really like Matt's, you know, guitar playing. It's very unique or whatever. Ryan Carroll's hands down the best all-around musician out of all of us, and it's not close. That was just my little thing. That's, it's true. In there, it's true. Little... He's unbelievable. <laughs> he's unbelievable. Okay, so on to some fun things. Thank you. Okay. Um, have you ever played Need for Speed Underground? Hell yeah, I've played Need for Speed Underground. Let me tell you that we got off tour with uh, Mushroom Head. Um, we did a little two week run with Mushroom Head, and we got told that we were going to be um, on the Need for Speed soundtrack. They actually gave me a free copy. So we got off the tour, and I went home, and I set my ass on the couch, and I played Need for Speed, and nice. I put our song on. Yeah, nice. it was a, it was a, it was a really cool moment uh, in my life to play, you know, video game with your song playing. So mm -hmm. it was cool. Hell yeah, I played it. <laughs> nice. So this one kind of hurts my feelings a little bit because I did not get to go with you and Ethan to see this. Oh. But the question is, how do you like the new Star Wars movie? The new, oh man, oh these, these questions are a little bit older. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, the new Star Wars is, um, I like them. I know they're controversial, um, but I think they did a pretty good job on them. Um, I won't give away any spoilers or anything, but overall, there are a couple things that, you know, were kind of weird, but um, I'm just glad that we have them. I'm glad that I have lived enough life to have been able to see all nine of these things so far. Um, actually, I guess ten, because the mm -hmm. one, you know, three and a half. 
or whatever. So, um, so I, I love it. I um, think they're pretty good and um, better than nothing. At least it's not Jar Jar Binks. That guy oh. sucks. Well, oh, that was rough. Yeah, episode one was not garbage. <laughs> garbage. <laughs> Um, okay, this one's cool. So here's a chance for you to plug the stuff, Deej. All right. Um, do you have your own merchandise? I and do. where can I get it? Merchandise. Okay, so I do have a, uh, it's a, I do have an online store. It's uh, dgmusic.bigcartel.com. dgmusic.bigcartel.com. Um, we can, I'll, uh, send some links over. But, yes, we have that, um. We have shirts. We've got uh, I've got physical CDs. I have a um, we have um, what do we have? We have the uh, we have a limited bracelet. edition vinyl. We've got yeah. all kinds of stuff, man. So yeah. um, we've got great stuff. So yeah, plenty of merchandise, and I think we've uh, lowered the price and put it on sale since uh, we have new stuff coming out soon. So uh, yes, head over check it out. Okay, all right. So this one's a music related question. Okay, um, you have songs with distort with distortion, mm -hmm. which later you made into an acoustic song. Um, also, you have a lot of acoustic songs. Mm -hmm. What do you perform more, acoustic guitar or electric guitar? Um, okay, so typically, um, probably talking about, I just released War, which was a, a kind of a tribute to what we did with Element 80. Um, so I did that, I did an acoustic version of that because I wanted to, um, I wanted to hear a different style. I wanted to do it a different way. Everybody was used to Element 80 being very loud and um, I, w I want to try to get people to feel emotions from the same song performed a different way. Um, my personal opinion is that if a song is really well written, you should be able to perform it acoustically and make people feel something um, if, it, if it's a well written song. Um, so for me, I try to write almost every song that I do on acoustic guitar in some form or fashion. Um, obviously, I have lots of amps back here that make a lot of loud sounds and noises and lots of cool guitars that make lots of, you know, heavy noises. So obviously I want to do that. Um, so I don't really have a preference one way or another. Um, I do, <laughs> I, I like, I, I write a lot of melodies based off of the acoustic guitar and a lot of the things that I'll come up with for heaviness or, um, textures I'll do on the electric guitar. I, I'm a big fan of delays, um, tons and tons of delays. So I, I usually stack those and play around with different sounds. So um, I don't have a preference one way or another. Obviously, live it's way more fun to play with loud guitars. So, but when I'm songwriting, it's typically on an acoustic. Okay, so many listeners like your mix of clean vocals and extreme screaming vocals. <laughs> Um, are you going to use any of your extreme vocals yeah. in your solo albums? Okay, so you know I, that's one of the that's the, some of the feedback that I've gotten from people is, hey, please bring back some of the screams. Um, I'm not opposed to them. I just wanted to try some different styles of music out because I was with Element 80 for so long. I didn't want to be seen as the guy from Element 80, and I really wanted to separate myself a little bit and try something different. So. Um, yeah, I've got, um, Tiff, you've heard it. There's another new song. There's another new song I'll be coming out with shortly um, called Running Out of Time, and it does have screams in it. Full blown, full blown aggressive screams. He's in definitely it. screaming. <laughs> I'm all the in way it. screaming in it. So um, it's it's a cool song. I feel like it's got a, a blend of uh, Muse and God, who knows what else. It's my favorite. It's really cool. I, I'm I'm really I'm really happy with it. I'm really I've I've held on to it for a while, but I'm gonna release it uh, shortly since I just did uh, Retrovision, the acoustic album. Um, so yeah, so I think Hollow will be the next single or Running Out of Time, and Running Out of Time has full blown screams in it. Yes, and I am working on stuff that that does have screams incorporated. Yes, a little bit more of the Bring Me the Horizon type feel. Epic. That's the epic yeah, song. big, 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 big loud guitars coming in the future. Loud drums, loud vocals. Sorry, that's all of it. It's my coming. favorite. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I've punished people with acoustic for too long. <laughs> okay, so this one, this question is in relation to um, which you prefer, working as a solo act or working um, as a team? Because um, indeed, both of them have challenges and disadvantages, mm. and obviously, there's. Pluses. Um, yeah, you know, 
So I've gotten pretty comfortable working with myself um, because it allows me to do things that I want to do without, um, you know, without having to compromise, obviously. Um, everybody, everybody who is a songwriter thinks they're the best songwriter in the room. Um, but usually the best way that you, the way that you get the best results is to collaborate and team up with other people. So I like working with myself in the sense that I like to see how I can push myself and what different types of songs I can make. I've been writing some really poppy stuff lately and some really heavy stuff. So, um, I like to challenge myself there, but, um, overall I think the band setting is a lot of fun. It's really good to get into a room with, uh, you know, two or three other guys that, have different backgrounds from you, have different styles from you. Um, I think that's where the most unique stuff comes from, and that's typically how you get the best performances from yourself, because you get pushed and challenged by other people. So, This one I think is going to be your favorite question of all this. Okay. Um, which guitars do you have, oh. and why did you choose them? There's actually like a couple of two-parter yes. questions. So we have the guitar question. Um, why do you have them and why did you choose them? Okay. And how do you decide which of those guitars to use in your recording? Great question. Um, guitars are works of art, in my opinion. I love them. They're, they are art. I want all of them all the time. Um, so, um, uh, a couple hang on the wall. Uh, you can't see one. That's the Gretsch, right? So the Gretsch is my number one. That's a, um, that is a... Brian Setzer from Stray Cats. It's uh, his signature Gretsch. Um, it's hot rodded with TV Jones pickups. That thing's a beast. I love it. Um, a hollow body guitar. It just screams. Um, so for me, that's my number one guitar. I used it all over. We wait so long to begin up and down. It's good, clean. Believe it or not, it can blow out some pretty blistering heavy uh, sounds if it needs to. Um, so that's typically my number one for live because I feel like I can play any genre on it and um, and the Bigsby tremolo is super cool. Um, the Paul Reed Smith is the guitar that I, um, I have a, uh, an American Paul Reed Smith. It's with McCarty, uh, McCarthy pickups in it. Um, it's probably my number one studio guitar because it's just, it's got a dark tone and it stays in tune really well and it just has a really nice, um, it just has a really nice sound to it. It's really thick and full, so I use that one the most probably in the studio. Um, a Fender Powercaster, I love, I've been using that a lot lately. Um, you can see it in the new 21 Pods video, that dude's using one too. Um, he must have seen me playing one. Um, <laughs> then there, I have a 60s reissue uh, Fender Telecaster. Um, that is a workhorse guitar. That's one of my favorites because it's super clean, but I put a, um, I put a little 59 humbucker in the bridge and so it gets really, um, that's one of the tightest guitars I have. So believe it or not, if I was going to play Element 80 riffs, I would play it on that guitar because the pickup is super, super tight. Um, and I've used that on a lot of recordings. That was, that guitar was on We Wait So Long to Begin quite a bit. Um, an 01 American Strat, I put Billy Corgan pickups in it, obviously. Um, that's just a gnarly all around screaming guitar. I used, I use that mostly for, um, fat rhythms or layers, if I do octave layers. Um, I have a Kyle Shutt Reverend um, that has his uh, custom rail hammer pickups in it. It's a very loud rock and roll guitar. I typically, anything that's gonna be extra dirty, that's the guitar for the job. And then, um, believe it or not, I have a, um, it's an Epiphone uh, Silver Burst Les Paul, but I've loaded it with uh, Misha Mansoor's uh, Bare Knuckle Juggernaut pickups, and that is a nasty, uh, a nasty setup. Um, that's the guitar. If you're going to want to play something heavy, um, you want to you want to tune a little lower. That's the guitar. Um, and truthfully, anything coming out of this Engel uh, Powerball Two is going to be pretty gnarly. So, um, those are the main guitars that I use. And anything acoustic, it's going to be Takamini. All, um, yeah, Takamini and um, Seagulls and Martins. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I like this next question because you're super hard on yourself all the time for your overall <laughs> skills, especially when it comes to recording. So this question asks, which pedals, amps, and effects are you using? Mm. Which software are you using? Mm -hmm. huh. Do you have a sound engineer? And if not, <laughs> I love this, how did you reach such high skills of for recording? Oh, thank you for that. I do not have a sound engineer. You're looking at the guy who does... Um, I, I took some time uh, and learned how to do um, 
recording. So I use Pro Tools. Um, that's my weapon of choice. Um, that's my uh, DAW that I use. Um, I also use a. Uh, I have. I use a warm audio compressor and a warm audio preamp when I record myself. Um, so my vocal chains that I use is pretty simple. I use a preamp into a compressor because I need because my voice is one that uh, has a lot of varying levels. Um, and then past that, a little bit of reverb and a little bit of delay. I don't uh, overthink it too much. A little bit of EQ um, because I come with a lot of mid range in my voice um, that I have to kind of clear up in the mud sometimes. Um, amps. Um, so my number one is uh, an Engel Powerball 2 right here. That's my absolute number one. I, I roll out of this custom uh, Mesa cab. Had to get the white because that's classy. Um, and then, um, so this is on We Wait So Long to Begin quite a bit. And then also I've got a Marshall um, DSL 100 that was on We Wait So Long to Begin quite a bit as well. Um, I have since um, um, picked, acquired a Mesa Stiletto um, that they don't make anymore. It's, I haven't used it on any recordings yet, but it's super loud. It will be in the future. And then this one, Tiffany and I just picked up. I'm loving this one. This is the Vox AC30 hand-wired. Uh, head. This thing is super gnarly. Um, and then, um, I, obviously, the Kemper, which is a complete game changer. I use a lot of um, I use a lot of different tones in here from a producer uh, Chris Crummett, who has done uh, work with Slaves, who I love. Um, anything with Johnny Craig, and then uh, a lot of stuff from Lee Malia from uh, Bring Me the Horizon. I try to manipulate a lot of those sounds. So a lot of the things I'm playing with now and textures, I get in there, and then when it's time to put the meat on it, you know, you just hook all these amps up and make all the sounds. Um, for pedals, like I said, I'm a real big delay guy, so I have, um, there's pedals there, there's pedals here. Uh, anything delay, I use Boss DD7s. Um, most, that's my main delay that was on the album with uh, Small Town and So Far Away. Um, um, tube Screamers, I have a couple of those. And then uh, Strymon, any Strymon pedal's good. I've got a, a digital delay and a reverb uh, pedal that's good. And then, um, that's, that's pretty much the gist of it. Lots of delays. And I have a Bogner uh, Blue Ecstasy Overdrive that I like a lot. What else is on that board? Your Strymon Blue Sky is the best. Yeah, the Strymon Blue Sky uh, reverb pedal is sick. And then, um, oh, the MXR uh, Carbon Copy. Um, delay analog delay is pretty sick so those are those are anything delay related that's that's my main axe I don't do a lot of boosting before a signal um, because I just love the straight sound usually I don't need it with the angle I don't need it if I if I'm gonna boost it's gonna be probably in front of the Marshall but typically I use the Marshall for anything clean or anything with a little bit of crunch to it if I'm gonna get nasty it's gonna be on the angle Pro Tools, yeah, that's what I use for my DAW. Yep. Um, what songs are you working on currently? Um, current songs, we've got a bunch. Um, running out of time is just about done. I'm just finalizing the mix, and then uh, I'll get it over to mastering. I'm almost done. I'm collaborating with a buddy of mine, uh, Jr. Hernandez, over here, um, close to me in Texas, uh, on the song "Hollow." We co-wrote that one, and then we've got another couple of songs we're working on together. Past that, um, that'll be out. Those should all be out this year. Um, and then I have a, a bunch of other songs that I was going to release solo, but I'm going to hold them back now because there should be a new band coming shortly that is not ready to announce yet. But um, I think those songs are going to get uh, used in that band. So that's what I'm working on. All right. Well, that's all the major questions. So this last one is just Ooh. what would you like to uh, say to your fans? Oh, my gosh. So um, thank you, guys. That's it. I mean, I when Element 80 was around, um, it was before social media, and um, we appreciate all the support that we got in that band. Being able to do those, I was 22 years old when we signed. Um, so, um, just to date myself, I just turned 40, um, and I have I've had a beard for like a decade, so I literally just shaved. Uh, <laughs> so here's my face, so you guys could recognize me somewhat, but. Um, uh, um, just really appreciative of, of everything that everybody allowed us to do and I'm really appreciative of people reaching out to me now that are still interested or have kept up or have, have 
sought sought out new music um, because there there are a lot of ways to hear music now. There's a lot of music out there, and um, I just really appreciate people sticking with me and reaching out and showing an interest and um, supporting and all the kind words. Um, and uh, you know, fans in particular from Russia. I always tell people Russia is like my <laughs> my second home because. Everybody for there has always been so nice to me and so super cool. Um, I hope one day I can get over there and 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 thank everyone and um, and like I said, I'm super excited to do this for you guys. I'm sorry it took a little while and uh, hopefully there's lots more coming soon. I'm uh, Tiffany and I are planning to do a lot more videos and things like this to try to have a little bit more interaction um, <clears throat> and make ourselves a little bit more visible so um, we can let you guys know that we are out here doing music and that. Um, you know, we want to we want to keep things coming out and try to keep stuff fresh, and so just very grateful, uh, very appreciative for everything you guys have done and everything you 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 continue to do. So, um, thank you. I think that's it. All right. Thank you guys. <laughs>